Are photographers creating fake colors in their Northern Lights photos? Yes. And no? It's a complicated topic, so let's break it all down. Hey everyone, I'm Ron Murray with the Aurora Chasers, and today I want to give you the truth about the colors in the Northern Lights. Every year, my wife Marquette and I guide many visitors from all over the world out to see and photograph the Northern Lights in Fairbanks, Alaska. You can learn more about our tours in the links below. One of the topics that we like to cover is setting expectations for what you might expect to see when you witness the Northern Lights for the first time. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video to see some of the real-time footage that we've shot so you can see how they move and some of that magic for yourself. Because of the way our eyes work, we don't see the aurora in all of its beautiful intensity and full array of colors with our naked eye. We have two types of receptors in our eyes. We have rods and we have cones. And each sees a little bit differently. So our rods are our low light vision and they see at night really well, but they don't see color. Uh, pretty much everything with our night vision is black and white. Our cone receptors, which are really good at seeing in color, do require a lot of light, and that's something in short supply at night. You could experiment with this for yourself. Go outside on a dark night away from any light pollution, take a nice bright colorful object outside with you, and let your eyes adjust and see if you can see the color of it. It'll probably look gray or kind of monochrome to you, black and white essentially. And if you look around, anything else is gonna look pretty much black and white. Take a bright green or a bright blue or a bright red, it's all gonna look kind of muted gray color. Now, turn on a light and immediately you're gonna notice you're gonna see all those vibrant colors really well. That green or blue or red object that you had suddenly becomes quite vibrant. But if you look off into the distant darkness, you're gonna notice you can't really see anything at all. In fact, it may be hard to see the stars or anything else like that if you've got some light around you. So the aurora, which is typically a light source in the sky, is bright enough for our rods or night vision to pick it up, but unfortunately it's not bright enough for our color vision or our cone receptors to see it. So pretty much when we're looking at the aurora, what we see is black and white. It looks kind of lacking in color. Fortunately for us, modern CMOS sensor cameras don't have this issue. They have an array of red, green, and blue sensors, or pixels, if you will, that capture the full array of color that's actually in the sky. So those colors are there, it's just that we can't quite see them. Another limitation of our biological human vision is that we have a limited shutter speed, if you will, in your eye. So even if you pry your eyelid open, your eye is only collecting light for just a fraction of a second. With cameras, we can leave that shutter open for several seconds or even several minutes if necessary to gather light over time. So while our eyes see something like this, the camera captures something like this. Also, depending on whether you're shooting in RAW or JPEG, the camera is either doing some processing to those photos or the photographer typically is bringing them into a photo editor such as Capture One or Lightroom and doing some contrast adjustments and adding maybe some saturation and things like that. Uh, raw images do require some processing. They are by definition raw, and so you're gonna have to add a little bit of contrast, some noise reduction, some sharpening, things like that. If you wanna learn how to edit those properly, we've done a video on that and you can find it here. Now, some artists do take creative license and do over-process those images or push them a little further, and so they tend to look a little bit more manipulated. And some even create colors that never were there. And while art by definition is, well, art and it's subjective and each person's gonna have their own style and likes and dislikes, for us personally, we feel it's important to represent what we show you guys as closely as possible to what we actually captured in that camera. So are photographers lying to you about the colors? Well, in a way, yes, because the camera is capturing things that you cannot see with your eye. In fact, the blues and the reds tend to not even be visible to the human eye spectrum. 
we have a limited range. It's primarily in the greens as far as the light spectrum or wavelengths of light that our night vision can see. And so to us, that appears to be either dark or just missing aurora. That said, the camera does actually capture the colors that are there. So if you see an image that isn't heavily processed, what that camera shot is actually the colors that were there. In fact, when scientists put spectrometers out and measure the colors of the aurora with those, they match up with what we're seeing on our cameras. Now it's worth noting here that not everyone sees color equal, and so some people will be a little more sensitive to one spectrum or the other. Uh, women, for example, tend to see reds better than men do. So Marquetta will often, on a really bright, vivid red night, she'll notice that she sees those red colors, and I can't see anything. In fact, I don't see the light at all from the aurora, but I see it on my camera. But in general, on an average night, we just don't quite see the color that the camera sees. It, it's magical, but it's not near as colorful. Now, if you happen to be one of those fortunate folks who shows up and catches a really spectacular night, uh, honestly, what the camera captures in photos doesn't even do justice to what we see out there. The vibrant purples become visible to the human eye. The greens even get a little bit brighter and we're able to start perceiving those colors. And the dancing and the motion and the magic and the experience is something you just can't capture in a photograph. And so it does have to be seen with the eyes to really be appreciated. But those nights are rare, maybe 10 times a year. So you really have to have a bit of luck. Don't plan to just show up and have that happen. But if it does happen to you, feel very fortunate because that is something unique and special. That said, experiencing the Northern Lights, whether they're incredibly spectacular or it's a mild night is still a magical experience. And being able to capture that and show all of those colors in cameras is why we keep doing this and why we teach this to folks and take them out to do the same thing. If you enjoyed this real-time footage of the Northern Lights and you wanna see even more, make sure you're subscribed to our channel because we are producing more and more of this and explore our channel because there's quite a bit on there already. And while you're at it, if you want to learn about what creates the colors of the Northern Lights, make sure you click that bell icon as well, because we'll be covering that in next week's video. So did you guys learn anything new? Do you feel cheated about the Northern Lights? Do you feel excited about going out to photograph them? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. If you're excited to see the Northern Lights for yourself now and you want to join us to do this, go ahead and click the link above. We'll guide you step by step through the photography setup and we'll get you out into the locations to get the best photos. And we'd love to have you out there. All right, guys, it's getting a little toasty in here, so I'm going to end this one for now. I appreciate you checking it out, and we'll see you guys in the next video.